In this episode, I'm going to cover creating an Android and iOS native application with XJS. I'll start off by using the Sentry command to create the application, and then I'll initialize it with the Cordova Packager. And then, after that, I'll be using Sentry to start the platform emulation, emulator or simulator, depending on the device platform. Okay, to get started, I'm going to go to the guide and talk about the prerequisites. Well, I'm going to use the Cordova Packager in this case. I won't be covering PhoneGap in this episode. And I'll leave a link to the to this guide in the video description below. And if I scroll down, I'm gonna be selecting the Cordova Packager. And what I wanna talk about is the environment setup where you have to have Java installed, Node.js installed, and I won't cover those steps in this episode. What I will cover is installing the Cordova extension to the node there. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna to go to the, the terminal and in your case, it may be different. It might be the command prompt with Windows. So what I want to do is paste this command in, and then I'm going to run it. And this will install the Cordova extension and put it in my local drive. So you can see that I've it installed at local bin, user local bin Cordova, and it's pointing to this location. Okay, so now that I have Cordova installed, I want to go back to the guide, and I'm going to scroll down to the next step. And what I want to look at is the config XML after the application has been created. And I'll show you what that is all about. So I'm going to scroll down and looking at developing the Cordova app. And what I want to do is generate the application. Okay, so now that I've, I'm ready to go, I want to generate the application. Well, I have it already dialed up in the terminal. And what I want to do is create a Sencha application by putting down Sencha. And then I want to specify the SDK. And in this version, it's 6.5.3.5.7. But uh, keep your eyes peeled because it constantly increases. So check the support portal for updates on that. And then what you want to do is generate the application. And then I'm going to specify modern in this application generation. And I'm going to create my application name as mountain app. And then I want to put it in the mountain app path. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter or return and it will generate the application. So now that the application is generated, I want to check that out in my file manager. So I'm going to go to the file manager and click on where I generated it. And here it is, Mountain App. And the two things in here that I'm going to be talking about in the tutorial is one is the app, J the app JSON. And the other one was, do I have the Cordova configured yet. Well, I don't, so I want to do that next. So I'll do the initialization for Cordova, and I'll be looking for Cordova directory next. Okay, so the next step is to initialize it, and what is that command? Well, if I go back to the guide, and I scroll down, it is going to be Sancha Cordova in it, and then my package name, and this is my unique identifier for the Android system, and this is the unique identifier for iOS and Android. And I'm not going to cover this in great detail, but I will show you how this translates into the config.xml in a second here. So I'm going to copy the first part of this command, and I'm going to paste it into my terminal. And I'm going to go paste, and it'll be sent to and it, and then com.gocket.mountain app. I'm going to make mine all, all lowercase. So I gotta finish that there, and then I'm gonna go mountain app. And what I didn't do yet is I'm gonna copy this here and go cut copy, and then I'm gonna go control C, and then I'm gonna change into my mountain app directory, and then I'm gonna paste that in. So it's important to note that you can't run that where you created the project, you have to change into the directory that you created. So then I have mountain app and mountain app. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter and this will initialize the application to be a Cordova application. Okay, so what it's telling me, it's added the native build to the app.json and the application has been initialized for native packaging. So what does that mean? So let me show you. I'm going to go to the app.json and look at that. So the app.json, it inserted this builds configuration right at the top. So this if you've created another configuration, it may show up at the bottom. But in this case, since I initialized it, after I created it, it showed up here. 
And I'm going to come back to this in a minute. Let me go back and look at the Cordova directory. And in the Cordova directory, I wanted to show the config.xml. So I'm going to open up config.xml. And in the config.xml, I just wanted to show that the ID shows up here, com.cotget.mountain, which is my domain name I use for YouTube videos and my simple identifier for this application. Okay, so then there's some other pieces in here that make up the application deployment and permissions for either Android or iOS, and Cordova does that translation for depending on the platform that it gets deployed on. Okay, so I won't cover all these pieces today, but I just wanted to make uh, bring this up as an important piece to the to the construction of a native application with Cordova. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to look at app.json. The first thing I want to point out is I created a native build and this native build doesn't have any platforms defined. So what I want to do is I'm going to name this, this is called the build name according to the, the guide instructions. And if I look, I'm going to scroll down, here is the build name. So that's what it's referring to, Sencha app build. And what I want to do is create one for I iOS and Android. So I'm going to create one for iOS and then I'll enable a platform instead of having both here. I'm going to create one for iOS. And then what I want to do is create one for Android. So I'm going to add another object here and create one for Android. So Android. And so this is a JSON annotation with a with the key here. And then the value or the mapped value here is going to be the packager construction definition. Okay, so then this one's got to be Android, so Android. Okay, so just to check, I have native iOS, and I have to have a comma here. I don't want a trailing comma, and then I want native Android, and the same construction. Everything is going to be the same here, except for the Android name. Okay, I'm going to save this. I can close this, and now I'm ready to do, let me just test with an app build, so I can test the system. So I'm going to go Sencha, app build native hyphen iOS or Android. So that's based on the name. So let me just copy that. I'm going to go to my terminal and look at the first one I want to try is iOS. So I go native. It doesn't have to be native. It's just one of the names I quickly picked just to make it simple and for this tutorial. So native iOS, I'm going to click on enter. This should build the application for native iOS. Okay, great, the build succeeded for iOS. So what about Android? Let me try Android. Okay, great, it works for Android. So let me see, I'm gonna run Senja App Watch and see what the web looks like. So I'm gonna go Senja App Watch. This will start up an embedded Jetty server with the application code and run that in a hosted container. Okay, so it's waiting for changes. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm gonna to go to the web and type in localhost 1841 and press on enter. Okay, great, that's what the app looks like in a web hosted container. So what does that look like with the native iOS installation or native Android? So let me package that up. How would I do that? So I'm gonna go back to the terminal and I'm gonna go control C to end this process for hosting Jetty. And then I'm gonna run it in a native emulation mode. So what will, how do I do that? So I'm gonna go uh, Sencha app. I could go Sencha app repair before I do it. I'm gonna go Sencha app emulate, emulate native. I'm gonna call the build name iOS. So what I'm gonna do is call Sencha app emulate and this will start up the process with Cordova and push it to iOS. So I'm gonna hit enter, and this is gonna take a few moments to do, and then once it loads up, let's load, get the emulator ready, and we should see that show up once the build is ready. Okay, so it's deploying to and pushing the build to iOS. In this case, it's an iPhone X. And there we go, it loaded on iOS. Well, it looks like it needs some optimization in the view and data loading. Let me just click on users and I can click on back on home. Okay, so the data loaded. So there's some optimization to be had in the, and I won't cover that in this episode. Okay, so what I wanna do is go to Android and try that out. So I'm gonna to deploy to Android. And in this case, instead of nat calling the build name iOS or native iOS, I'm gonna call build, build name native Android because that's how I defined it in my app.json. 
Okay, so deployed and pushed the application natively as an APK to Android. And so you can see the grid probably could be optimized as well for Android. But in this case, I'm not going to cover that in this episode, but I wanted to show that I could emulate both for both devices and push the native Cordova application up to them. So that concludes this episode on basically creating a native application with the XJS. In the future episodes, I'll get into this in greater detail. So thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks on XJS, and I'll catch you later.